You can drink stars using just the curse tool. I like to think of this quick and dirty method as pseudo-deconvolution. I've mentioned in the past that sometimes I opt not to deconvolve stars in my compositions. I might like, for one reason or another, the appearance of larger stars, especially if there aren't too many stars in the image and they won't predominate. Used judiciously, they can help balance darkness and add to the character of negative space. But I came up with this way to quickly get a sense of what deconvolved stars would look like if I wanted to test that in the image before deciding on deconvolution or not. It's a very straightforward process and I'll walk you through it. Now, to do this process, I've taken that picture I made a couple weeks back of the Sol Nebula, run spectrophotometric color calibration on it, and then blur exterminator. After blur exterminator was run, I separated a star plate using star exterminator. These are truly deconvolved stars and I labeled that plate star BXT and then set that plate aside. I then undid the edits on the primary plate, that of the nebula, backing up through star removal and through the blur exterminator, back to an almost virgin tableau where only the spectrophotometric color calibration had been run. At that point, I ran star exterminator again in order to extract stars that had not been deconvolved. And then I labeled that plate stars no BXT. Then, using the histogram transformation tool, I stretched the light curve on star BXT and then ran the exact same histogram stretch on the star's no BXT plate. This gave us nonlinear star plates with deconvolved and non-deconvolved stars, which with we could test how effectively we could sort of cheat at deconvolution using the curves tool. Again, this isn't real deconvolution. This is kind of a quick and dirty cheat, something I do with a clone image when I'm wanting to test various degrees of deconvolution over a star plate for composition purposes. On the desktop, you see the deconvolved stars in the plate below and the non-deconvolved stars on the plate above. So now let's get about some pseudo deconvolution. I'll just open up the curves tool and we'll set about that purpose. It's quite easy. In the lower 20% of the curves tool, we grab the curve line, drag it down 30 to 50% so you see the brightness of the stars receding and more black space in your star plate. Then about a quarter from the top right, again grab the curve line and realign the curve up there with a the central diagonal. This will keep your upper brightness level, but lower the contrast near the black point, and that will have the effect of tightening up any radiance around the stars. Unfortunately, it's not a perfect solution. It won't make the stars look more tightly focused, and it may dim out the dimmer stars. There is a way to compensate for the dimming, and I'll show you that in a bit, but it will dim out the dimmer stars. Frequently though, that's not very important. Often, when we're composing images of nebulae, we try to minimize the presence of stars to help the nebulae stand out. So we go ahead and mute out some of those dimmer stars anyway. Otherwise, some nebulae would be predominated by literally thousands and thousands of stars. So I'm just going to finish realigning the upper quarter of the curve line with the central diagonal. That's the lower left corner of the upper right square, right here. This kind of curve crushes the contrast in the lower region of space, darkening the blacks, which also causes the faint radiance around stars to contract while preserving the central brightness of the stars. The effect is subtle, but you can see it. The radiance around the stars is a bit more muted and the dimmer stars are a bit tighter. But if you compare that upper plate, the pseudo deconvolution with the true deconvolution done by Blur Exterminator in the lower plate, you can see that the pseudo deconvolution method has lost the dimmer stars. Like I said, in some compositions that might be desirable, but if you want some of those stars back, you can get them back. If you have access to an editor like Photoshop or Affinity Photo, grab the clarity tool, stick it in your star layer and drag your clarity way up. I can't say for Photoshop, but in Affinity Photo, I typically drag it all the way to 100% and that will bring out the dimmer stars again. I'll walk through the process here. This is our non-deconvolved star plate. I'm going to do a quick pseudo deconvolution using the curves tool. So down near the bottom of the curve, near the lower 20 to 25%, I'll grab the curve on the master channel, which affects both luminance and color, which is very important when doing this technique. And I'll pull the curve line down into a slight negative C. Then I'm going to level off the upper right quarter of the curve, even with the lower left point on the square. As noted earlier, this crushes contrast in the lower luminance range, thereby darkening the space. And the light, which is the outer part of the pixelation of stars as well as their hazes, will contract as a result. And by leveling off the curve near the upper right, we restore the brightest parts of the stars to their full brightness and that's what creates that pseudo-deconvolution effect. 
Now, to compensate for the loss of those stars, I'm going to open the Clarity tool. And in this case, I'm going to drag the Clarity all the way up to 100%. Now, I'll just turn the layer on and off, and just keep an eye on the tableau. You'll see the dimmer stars further dimming or disappearing when I turn down the Clarity tool, and returning when I turn it back on. So how effective is this pseudo-deconvolution technique? Well, let's take a look. The bottom layer is the Sol Nebula from which I extracted the star plate. Above that, labeled Star Test Zero Deconvolve, are the non-deconvolve stars. The next layer down is Star Test. Those are the stars that I pseudo-deconvolved by using that curves trick. And below that is the Star BXT layer. Those are the stars that have been truly deconvolved using Blur Exterminator. Now here we see the entire image with the non-deconvolved stars. Let's switch that out and take a look at the pseudo-deconvolved stars. You can see the stars are definitely tighter. They're not truly deconvolved, but they're definitely tighter. Let's take a look at the deconvolved stars made by Blur Exterminator. Ugh, Blur Exterminator. There really is no comparison. They are nice, tight, pinpoint stars and very beautiful with just the right amount of radiance around them. One of these days with enough experimenting, I will figure out how to emulate that. I've gotten close, very close actually, but it's too complicated a technique to be considered a quick and dirty deconvolution emulation technique. Let's see how the three variations of stars look up close. Here you see the non-deconvolved stars over and around the spires of the Sol Nebula. These are the quick and dirty deconvolved stars made with my simple technique. And finally the stars deconvolved with Blur Exterminator. Again, there really is no doubt the results from Blur Exterminator are far superior. But as you can see, you can also quickly and simply tighten non-deconvolved stars on the star plate with a simple concave C curve on the curves tool that is leveled up near the top quarter. And by elevating the clarity tool, you can bring back many of the stars that are lost with that simple quick and dirty technique. And here are the results of each of the techniques side by side for your consideration. You can actually use the curves tool, contrast, clarity, and sharpening to tighten the stars in the pseudo deconvolution method even more. I would never consider this method anywhere nearly as good as proper deconvolution, but at times it can be a helpful little trick especially if you're experimenting with different composition styles. After all, it's a lot faster to run this and multiple variations of it than multiple renders of Blur Exterminator with different settings. Hope that helps. Now, I think you know what's coming next. Get out there and shoot the sky.